Although I first read Frankenstein when I was 19, I was a sophomore in college, it's only really in the last three years that I was deeply invested in it because of some things I shared with the experience of the monster. So I've written a lot of poems, my own personal work, about Frankenstein, about the monster, about Mary Shelley. And as I started thinking about Frankenstein, I was really interested in the idea of a ballet production of the novel but one that went beyond the just general notions that we have of um, you know, the 10 foot ugly monster making these inaudible noises, the bride of Frankenstein with the like 10 feet high hair, you know, which really have nothing to do with the novel. And the novel itself is a fascinating story about abandonment, about creation, about mother and child, about narcissism. And the only really dance company, the only dance company I've seen take on archetypes and psychological narratives has been Dominic Walsh Dance Theater, who I've seen perform since Romeo and Juliet in 2006. And I was very interested in the way that he uses not just literature and other myths, but how he really communicates a psych kind of psychological, projective kind of language through balletic movement. So I went to an open rehearsal of Titus about two years ago and I asked if I could meet with him about a project. And it sort of, you know, went from there. Hmm. Yeah, I, I it's interesting because um, oftentimes people will have suggestions for pieces that I should do, but um, but Addie and I started talking, and I was really fascinated by the fact that she had done so much research in this, um, in in from the novel, and not only from the novel, but but uh, from about the author, about Mary Shelley and and Mary Shelley's mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, and I was really fascinated by her investment of the. Um, of not only the novel, but where the novel came from. And, and this is what kind of sparked a lot of our initial conversations about, um, about what we could do with this. How can we take this on and present it in a way that was um, as profound and, well, not as profound, but certainly uh, more profound than the B movies and, and maybe, um, you know, as eloquent as some of the text. Um, mm -hmm. I, we were both just really drawn drawn in by the um, by the weight and the the phenomenal metaphors that that exist um, within the text that deal with um, the question of life and what we create and what we're accountable for and um, and and narcissism and um, I don't know I, I also felt it was very timely actually politically <laughs> and socially timely uh, you know, a question that Dominic asked me a lot through, you know, the first year of us sort of conceptualizing and just talking about the different themes in Frankenstein was how is it, how is it relevant? What is it trying to say? Particularly because he has addressed some of these archetypes before. But I think that everyone can relate to this idea of being abandoned, to abandoning things, and to feeling as though you're an outsider, you're alienated. And one of the, the biggest problems I see with the B-movie conceptions of the monster is that he is this very violent figure. And actually in the novel, he only becomes violent after he's rejected by, by humanity. And I think we can all sort of relate to feeling monstrous or feeling, you know, like a hideous beast. And that's really when our most, you know, animalistic, maybe hostile motives come out is after we feel really rejected as a as a person and so I thought that that sympathetic um, address of the monster hasn't really been done and I was interested in seeing what that would look like you know um, in a physical dance theater performance and I think is we, we both felt it was interesting because dance is an abstract form of communication and and um, and so it lends itself, uh, in in my way of thinking, to explore some of these um, some of these um, emotional, psychological 
journeys that that most most people go through um, at one point or another um, in a way that in a way that is um, it somehow has innocence to it perhaps uh, if that makes sense that that when you're dealing with a with a subject matter through movement through gesture through a, a kind of primal human experience in a way if you think of dance that way then um, then it kind of brings an innocence to it. And I, I have always found the creature an incredibly innocent figure and peaceful, and he educates himself. He becomes very well-read and, and very resourceful and very generous. And, um, and it's and all in the, you know, all, all without his source, without his parent, his father. And, um, and it's not until he gets rejected over and over again, like Addie mentioned, that, that this um, that the monster kind of becomes unveiled, if you can call him that. I mean, you know, often we think about Frankenstein as a cautionary tale, not for mother and child, but for you know the industrial revolution and what happens when you take God's power into your own hand. But when you know that Mary Shelley, Mary Shelley's own mother died when she was 11 days old from a, a disease to the uterus. When you learn that her first three children died either at birth or very early on in their lives, then it, it, he, you know, she's saying something different. What, what happens when, when man completely ignores woman's right to give birth, to conceive, to, to be pregnant, to carry a child? What happens when you totally get rid of that? And not only do you try to create a human on your own, but you create a human through death. So what is she really saying about that? This is a woman writing a novel where all the women die, and mm. it's all about men. And so I, I find that to be a very sort of fascinating relationship between mother, child, that I really wanted to explore further than I feel that it has been. I think too another another element that was really fascinating to us, um, like I mentioned previously, was the the idea of of Mary Shelley and, and who she is and and um, what was happening in her life when she met uh, Percy Shelley, and um, and so a lot of the production focuses on on their initial meeting and we kind of we open the piece introducing her mother Mary Wollstonecraft. And uh, it was at the, it was actually at the grave of her mother that she met uh, Percy, and so um, this is the this is how we introduce uh, Mary and Percy is at this moment, and and um, we spend probably half the production um, with their introduction to each other and the beginning of their of their life, and they were together about two years before she wrote the novel, and it was. Um, um, it, it was uh, it was quite eventful and quite difficult for both of them during during this during this time, and so I think that played a lot into into the novel. <laughs> 